Okay, guys, uh, picking up where we left off last week, we took our uh, elements and we combined them into the same scene. We've got our body model, we've got our hand model, we've got our head model, and we've got our ear model. And what we did initially was we just kind of brought everything in and uh, made an attempt to get it all the same scale and proportion, make sure everything lines up. And we kind of worked slightly on just modeling some transitions from like the body to the neck and the arm to the hand. All right, so what we need to do now to finish this uh, model off is we actually have to attach everything to everything, and then we need to actually weld the vertices so that um, we have one consistent mesh from, you know, basically nude male character from the feet to the hands to the eyes to the head. Um, you probably will not build a character this complicated um, for much of your career since Digital models are often segmented and broken into manageable chunks if the person's wearing clothing, etc. But it's a good thing to know how to do this because uh, you will occasionally have to do this. When you do do it, though, you can only do it once and then you just keep reusing the model over and over again. So I'm going to first go ahead and delete half of my mesh here. And then I'm going to select uh, my body here. And I'm going to go into the editable poly for the body. And I'm going to go ahead and attach these meshes. But before I do that, I just want to check to make sure that the density of the edges is similar from the hand to the body. And if I look on the top and bottom, we can see here, I have approximately the same number of edges uh, for the body as I do for the hand. So I just want to check that really quick. If, it, if that was not the case, you would need to either turbo smooth one of the objects. So in this case, the hand actually has a turbo smooth on it. So if I reduce the turbo smooth, or I'm sorry, if I turn the turbo smooth on, didn't know it was on. If I turn it on, you can see here that the hand would now have way too many edges for the body, in which case I would actually have to add more edges for the, the body in order to accommodate the hand. We don't want to do that, though, because this one, I can just go ahead and delete the turbo smooth, and now I've got the same edge uh, approximately as on the body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the body now, and I'm going to attach it. But I just remembered something, that when I brought this hand in, I'm going to say unhide, or hide unselected, that I did not delete the polygons off the back of the hand here on the wrist. Now, if I were to attach this to the body and then try to weld the vertices, I would have found out later that I had these polygons here, and I would not have been able to weld the verts because... I would, have poly I would not have a border edge, which is the requirement that you need in order to weld two poly objects together. All right? So I need to delete some faces off of this hand. So I'm going to go in here and just select the back side of the hand. I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way by just control-clicking all of them. And then I'm going to make sure I didn't select any that I didn't want to, which I did. So I'm going to Alt, Shift, Drag to deselect those. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete all those faces or polygons off the back of the hand. And then now I can say right click and say unhide all. And now it's time for me to go ahead and attach the hand to the body now that I have a border edge and I can weld it. So I'm going to select the body mesh. I'm going to go into the attach under the Edit Geometry tab in the Editable Poly for the body. I'm going to go ahead and click on the hand. Because I'm in Attach Mode, that's going to attach it. I'm going to then exit Attach Mode so I don't accidentally attach other things to this that I don't want. So I'm going to exit Attach Mode. Now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to find this transition here from the wrist to the arm. And if I turn on the wireframe here for a second, we can see here that my wrist goes deep into the arm. So what I want to do is I want to make a decision at this point as to which mesh I'm going to use as my target shape and which mesh I'm going to merge to the other. In this case, if I turn the hardware shaded back on, you can see here that this edge here on the arm where it goes into the hand is kind of a little jangled and organic. And if I go into wireframe mode, you can see here that my edge on my wrist is actually pretty uniform. And I probably spent a little bit more time on the wrist than I did on the wrist on the body. So my decision in this case is going to be to 
merge the vertices of the body mesh to the vertices of the hand mesh, all right? So I'm going to go back to shaded view, just hit F3 to do that. I'm going to go into polygon mode, and what I want to do is I want to kind of select the polygons just above the wrist there, the way I did it, well, I selected one with the control key, and then I held down the shift key and double clicked, and that selects the ring all the way around. So then once I've done that, I can go ahead and delete. And we can see here that I've deleted all the polygons uh, about where the break of the wrist is. And then I'm going to go into element mode and select that leftover bit. And I'm going to go ahead and delete those. And there we go. We've got a nice little gap between our wrist uh, and our hand. And now we can go ahead and uh, fill that gap. I want to show you two different methods to do this. Uh, Thus far, you guys have probably seen the technique where we use the um, target weld tool, and we would just go ahead one by one and start pulling these points to target weld them. I want to show you another technique which is can be useful from time to time. And uh, the reason I want to show you this one is because it's not uh, destructive. It's, it's undoable, all right? So another method, and it accomplishes the same thing, is you can go into vertex mode here. And I'm going to turn on my point snapping. So I'm going to go up here into the snaps toggle. And I'm going to right click to open up the settings. And the first thing I'm going to do is say clear all because I don't know what I previously had set here. And what I want to do is I want to snap to vertex only. And so I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to turn my snaps on. Now what's going to happen is whenever I grab a vertex here and start moving it around with the move tool, it's going to want to snap to a vertex. And so I'm just going to kind of go around the hand one by one. And occasionally, the, you know, the snap gets a little confused sometimes. What it is is uh, I need to zoom in because I'm trying to snap to something, and the snap extent is um, a little too refined for how far I was zoomed out. So I zoom in, and that's going to solve that problem. And what I'm trying to do here is I want to take the vertices, and then the rule of thumb is just what is this vertex closest to on this one, and it's this one. And then this one, how close is it to this one? Well, it's closer to this one. And I'm just going to go all the way around doing that as a rule. So pull it closer. Same thing here. i got to zoom in closer in order to do this. Occasionally, you will get a missed snap piece like that, and you just kind of got to watch for that. And I'm going to keep going around. one by one. Again, what is this vertex closest to? It's closest to this one. Okay, it's closest to this one. So we're going to end up in places, as you can see here. We've got quads along the front, top of the uh, part of the wrist, but on the side we have no choice and we're just going to end up with some tries. So there's really no, uh, we're not going to be too ordered in this and try to figure out mathematically or anything. We're just going to go ahead and weld these. Uh, based upon who they're closest to. So again, same thing. Closest to this one, closest to this one, closest, closest. And I'm just going to go all the way around. And the cool thing about doing it this way just to reiterate, I have not welded anything at all. I'm going to turn the snaps off for a second and show you. But see what happens if I move that edge off? I have not actually welded that vertex. So what I'm doing is I'm doing it in this manner so I kind of keep my options open later. In case I don't like the way I did it, I could change something. All right, I'm probably going to like it, but I want to show you guys a uh, technique. So, you know, you have multiple techniques to do the same thing. So I'm going to keep going here. That one I got wrong. I want to pull it down to here.
And it is worthwhile though that you kind of want to try to not have more than five of these edges going to a point. Uh, that's not a rule or anything, but if you can avoid it, don't don't end up with more than five edges going to the same point. And same problem here. I'm not zoomed in close enough. My tolerance is. I'm going to go into the incremental zoom here for a sec. And move this back. Okay, there we go. So it looks like I've got all the edges married up to a partner, and I've got no gaps in between. So that's what we want. And at this point, if I want to weld these, because I was careful and I actually went around the entire mesh and I set, um, set them up properly, I now know that I can turn off my snaps toggle and I can just go ahead and marquee drag. Once I get into vertex mode, I'm going to marquee drag around all those vertices and I can just use the weld with the threshold. So I'm going to use the weld right here under edit vertices and I'm going to give it a threshold. I'm going to give it something very small. The reason I can use a very small value is because I actually use the snaps toggle to toggle each one of those vertices until they're right on top of each other. So I'm going to give it like a 0 0.01. I could probably even get away with a 0 0.001. And I'm just going to click the red or the uh, green check mark there for accept. And then now to confirm, I just want to make sure that I actually, in fact, welded those verts together. I'm going to go into edge mode and I'm just going to give one of these a tug to see, yeah, in fact, that's welded. And now I know that the entire thing is welded, all right? There's a little bit of a problem here that we can see that we've got a little bit of a bogus transition going on, right? We've got the wrist and then we've got um, the, the forearm there and it's just a little weird and maybe not that great. So we've got a few ways we can uh, improve this transition. I'm gonna hit the F4 key to go into uh, shaded view. And I also see something else here that I wanna rectify immediately. See all this faceting? on this geometry versus the smoothness of this geometry. Well, that's actually something that's called a surface normal and it's a normal shading group. And what it is is the software tells um, the graphics card how to shade that geometry based on the angle of the, the face normal in relation to the other face normal, all right? So right now, some of these face normals are, are hard, so they're zero. And some of these over here are probably like a 75 degree angle. So the way you fix that is you first go into polygon mode. So I'm going to go into polygon mode here. And you want to select all the polygons in your mesh. And then I'm going to zoom in here on the hand so we can see the effect of this. And then I'm going to go over here into the um, editable poly. And I'm looking for a section here called polygon smoothing groups. And what this is, is this controls how these smoothing groups are rendered to the graphics card, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do, I have all my polygons selected and I know that. So I wanna use this button here called Auto Smooth, which makes this very easy. The first thing I'm gonna do is an Auto Smooth of zero and I'm gonna click that and then show you, look, everything got hard, just like the top of the hand. If I use something higher, like a 75, and I do it again, look what happens, everything gets smooth. And that's because it's basically saying that if the angle between the two face normals is greater than or less than a certain value, it's either going to shade it hard or soft. In this case, we use a 75, so it's going to shade those all soft. Basically, the, the smoother you want your mesh to be, the higher that angle you put in, the harder you want the mesh to be, the lower the angle. So in this case, 75 is a good number. It actually fix the transition from the hand to the uh, wrist. And now what I want to do is I want to get out of polygon mode I just wanted to fix that little display glitch before I actually, that, that was just in the rendering. So that's just the surface normals. Notice that has nothing to do with the, the actual geometry. It didn't change the geometry at all. It just changed the way the geometry was displayed. All right. So now I want to actually change the geometry. So I, I fixed the transition from a display point of view, but now I actually want to fix the transition from a shape point of view. I have two different tools I can use to do that. We can go into the editable poly, and if we go down to the very bottom here on the right, we have the paint deformation tool, which you guys are familiar with. 
And all we have to do is go into relax here. And I get my little paintbrush here. And I can change the radius by holding down the shift and control keys and dragging my mouse up and down. And I could go in here and I could smooth this out, right? And that's one way to do it. And it's working okay. Um, and it's also illustrating here that I have a hole there. So that's good. I need to fix that. Um, but I want to show you another way to do this. And because the paint deformation tool is, is okay, but it's also a little limited. It's maybe not the most advanced tool for this. So I'm just going to undo out of that operation. And I'm going to make sure that I grab these verts here. I think that I may have used a well threshold that was slightly low. The 0 .001 was a little too low. So I'm going to grab all these verts again. And I'm going to weld them a second time. And this time I'm going to take a 0 out of my equation here and just do a 0 .01 and say OK. And I hope that's enough to uh, go ahead and weld those verts. All right, so now I want to fix this transition again. So I'm going to get out of vertex mode. And I want to click on the ribbon here. I'm going to click on the little white button to expand all the, all the uh, sub-object menus. And the one I'm looking for here is Freeform. And then the tool is to paint the form. And this one also, this one's a, basically like the paint deform down here. It's just a lot more advanced. So in this paint deform tool, I'm also going to use the relax slash soften. I'm going to hold down the control and shift key simultaneously and make the brush a little smaller. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to smooth this out. And see how this one's doing kind of a better job? It's also bringing the edges closer to each other, which is... Um, Definitely more desirable than the previous tool's attempt to smooth this out, all right? So this one, I, in my book, I, I would always use this tool to do uh, stuff like this. So see how it's bringing all those edges closer together? That's kind of nice, and that's kind of what you want. I'm just going to keep going. It's really doing a great job of just hiding all my junk and uh, making me look better than I actually am. And who wouldn't want a tool like that, right? Okay, so I go ahead and paint that transition out. Now we've got a nice transition from the forearm to the wrist. And I'm going to go ahead and exit this tool by just hitting the Q key uh, for select mode. I'm going to then hit the F4 key to get out of wireframe unshaded. And we can see here now we actually have a decent transition from the hand to the wrist. Everything's looking reasonably well. And we can keep going on to the next, um, the next item. All right. So the next item on the list is the head. So same thing as before, I'm going to hit the F4 key again to show wireframe unshaded. You just kind of want to look at the head and the body, and do they have the same number of edges? It looks to me like the body has a lot more number of edges on it than the head does. So that tells me that I need to actually turbo smooth this head before I can weld it to the body. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to select the head. Uh, it already actually has a turbo smooth on it. So I'm just going to increase the iterations from 1 to 2. And then if I check this again, oops, I didn't want to go 3. I wanted to go to 2. If I check this again now, if I compare the number of edges, it looks pretty similar, right? It's not going to line up 100%, uh, but it's probably close enough to get the job done, all right? So now that I've done that, I'm going to select the body. I'm going to go into attach mode, and I'm going to select the head to attach it. Now I'm still in attach mode, so you always want to exit attach mode. You can either do that by clicking on that button again, or I can right-click in space, and it also gets me out of attach mode. All right? So now I need to go into the head transition to the body. Same deal. I need to pick a transition that I'm going to use. All right? So I'm going to evaluate the body. Well, that neckline is kind of weak because it's just straight across. And the neckline on the actual neck is a little bit better because the, the edges are actually flowing organically with the shape of the neck. So I think in this case, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little bit of a hybrid. I'm going to pick a spot on the neck that I like, and I'm going to select one of those faces, polygons. And I'm going to shift double click to select the loop around or the, uh, the ring. And I'm going to delete that. And then now what I want to do is I want to pick a edge loop around on the body mesh that's similar in position to the other one. But before I do that, let me go into element mode and delete those stray polygons there from the neck. So I'm going to get rid of those. 
And then now I need to just pick an edge loop here on the actual body model. And I think I just want to delete just that top row there would probably be good. So I'm going to delete that. And all I'm looking for is I just want to create a gap between the two meshes so that I'm not constantly hunting and pecking uh, for vertices that are kind of lost inside of the other verts. So I've got a little gap there. <clears throat> now I can go ahead and start merging these verts. This time I'm going to do it a little different. I'm going to go ahead and use it the old-fashioned way. I'm going to use the target weld tool. So I'm going to go in here to vertex mode. I'm just going to select a vertex here so that I can hit the Z key to zoom in on that selection. Something that's slightly annoying with Max is that <clears throat> you can zoom into your selection in sub-object mode in editable poly. But the moment you deselect that, what happens is the camera gets a little confused and it no longer puts the places the camera's interest on the zoom selection. So I'm just going to stay in the vertex mode so that I can occasionally select a vertex and hit the Z key to frame that selection in order so I can uh, keep the camera from zooming it out, uh, out on me in order to do this. So now that I'm in vertex mode, I'm going to go into target weld tool. And I'm going to pick which one I want to weld to. In this case, I want to weld from the body to the head because the neck actually has a little bit more desirable uh, edge parameterization than the body does. So I'm just going to go ahead and same rule as before. You're just going to merge to whatever's closest, whatever vertex is closest to the other vertex. And we just keep going around. My camera is starting to lose its center, so I'm going to exit the target weld tool for a second and select a vertex and hit the Z key to zoom it so that I get my camera's interest back where I want it. And then I'm going to go back into the target weld tool. And again, I'm moving from the body to the neck, closest vertex. And we can see here that at this point, we're starting to run out of vertices, at least in this area, um, from the body to the neck. So the, the neck actually has a few more edges than the body does. For the moment, I'm just going to ignore that one. We've got a stray vert there that's not welded to anything. I'm just going to ignore that and keep going because I want to deal with that later, and I want to make sure I do that in an uh, intelligent manner rather than right now. So I'm going to keep going here. Closest vertex. I'm going to leave a few of these open. Here's where we're really running into it. So we've got extra. So again, closest vertex. And then now that I'm done, on the, from the body to the head. I'm going to go back around on that top and I'm going to grab all of those ones that were kind of strays and I'm just going to tie them moving left one, one edge wherever I see one. Well, the reason I waited to do this until the end is because I just wanted to make sure that I, I kind of did them all the same way in a consistent fashion uh, for no other reason other than it's just prettier. Um, I don't like it when you you got one edge snapped one way and one edge snapped the other way. Um, just more clean if they're all snapping the same direction. Okay, so it looks like I did it. It looks like I have everything pretty well uh, snapped together. I'm going to exit the target weld tool. I'm going to go to the top of the editable poly. I'm going to hit the F4 key and check this out. We got this transition here, which is kind of an abrupt transition. Again, this has everything to do with the surface normals and their smoothing groups and it has nothing to do with the actual mesh itself. So before I start painting this transition and smoothing it out, I want to fix the visible display of the, of the transition by assigning the same set of smoothing groups to the entire mesh. So I'm going to select all the polygons on the mesh and then I'm going to zoom into the next so you guys can see the result of this operation. So I'm going to select all the polys, I'm going to zoom in, we can see that nice tight uh, abrupt change and that's because there's a different set of smoothing groups for these polygons than there is for this one. So we need to get them all on the same page. We're going to do that by going over here 
into the polygon smoothing groups in the editable poly. And we want to use that auto smooth. 75 is a good value, so I'm going to go ahead and say apply. And look what happens. That little abrupt transition disappears. All those polygons now have the same smoothing group. And now we can get a decent evaluation for how that transition actually looks uh, in the display. And it looks pretty good, honestly. So uh, I want to just smooth it up a little bit more. So I'm going to select the mesh. And I'm going to go into the freeform paint deform tool. And I want to grab that relax and soften brush one more time. And I'm going to increase the brush size. And I'm just going to go in here and hit it. And then I'm going to show the wireframe on this again so that I can see that I, I want to get my edges to kind of line up nicely with each other. And it just still just does an amazing job of that, how pretty that is. You can barely even see these uh, tie-offs that I have. These are called tie-offs where you have a kind of an uneven number of edges from one ed edge to another and you have to tie them off to a triangle. Uh, these are less than desirable, but um, in certain cases you just have to live with them and this is one, so we're going to live with them. So once I've done that, I'm going to hit the Q key to get back into selection mode. And I'm going to hit the F4 key so that I can see my mesh without um, the wireframe on shaded. And we can see here, I see this little divot here in the neck. And that's a little troubling to me because I just got into the smooth tool. And I tried to smooth that. And I'm going to see if I can smooth this again. So I'm going to go back into the tool. And I want to say relax and soften. And it seems like no matter how hard I hit that with the relax and soften tool, there's still that little divot there in the neck. It's almost like those vertices are stuck, like they don't want to get smooth. And that happens sometimes with this tool, okay? So you can try two things. You can click on this little accept button. This essentially kind of bakes the history for the paint deformation tool. And try it again. If that doesn't work, that did not work. What you sometimes need to do in order to kind of refresh the tool is to select the object. So I'm going to hit Q for select mode. And then I'm going to just take this object and I'm going to really quickly in the modifier stack, I'm going to first convert it to an editable mesh, which basically removes that editable poly node for a second. And then I'm going to convert it back to an editable poly. And my theory here was that that little spot in the neck that was not smoothing out was being stuck somehow by that editable poly modifier. It wasn't allowing me um, to modify those points. And I think that it was a corrupt editable poly modifier, all right? So to prove my hypothesis, I'm going to go back into, first I'm going to hit the F4 key to hide the wireframe on shaded. And I'm going to go back into the paint, tool, paint deform tool. I'm going to click on the relax and soften one more time and check it out. I was right. That editable poly had somehow gotten corrupted and it essentially had stuck those pixels in a, or those vertices in a spot where I couldn't, edit them for whatever reason. So again, I fixed that by very quickly just converting it to an editable mesh and then converting it back to an editable poly. Um, as long as you don't have any uh, modifications on your mesh that have a history related to that editable poly, uh, the z net effect of that operation is basically a zero. Okay. So we've got the hand, the body, and the head all merged together now. Now the last thing we want to merge is the ear. Well, the ear I saved for the last because it's also the most complicated. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the NERMS and turn off the NERMS subdivision for the ear so that we can actually see the poly mesh. And we just want to kind of compare the geometry of the head to the geometry of the ear. And it looks like up here I see all these edges right here. But on the head, I don't really see any edges other than one, two, three to merge this to. All right. So in this case, I think I want to do a little bit of pre-planning. Same thing down here. I've got all of these edges. Looks like about six or seven. And I really only have about three viable edges to connect that to. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I want to select this border edge really quickly on the head. So I want to select the head, then go to border edge. And first thing I want to do is I'm just going to scale this down a little bit so that the opening on my head mesh is similar to the opening on my ear mesh. 
in a similar position even, okay? All right, now what I want to do is I want to actually hide the body for a second. So I'm going to go ahead and select the body here, get out of sub-object mode. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to say hide selection. And then now I want to zoom into the ear. Remember what I said about the ear having all these excessive verts on the top and bottom, and the head only having about three verts to connect to, or edges to connect to? So what I'm going to do is just a little bit of pre-planning here. I'm going to grab my ear, and I'm going to collapse these edges down uh, so that I only have about three edges at the top and the bottom of the ear. All right. So I'm going to go in here to my ear. I'm going to go into vertex mode, and I'm going to grab the target weld tool. And what I want to do here is I'm going to just grab this vertex here, collapse it into this one, this one here, I'm going to collapse it into this one. And this one here, I'm going to kind of collapse that into that one. So what I've done is I've taken all these edges down to about three edges. And then I also know that this is going to be a little excessive in here. So I'm going to collapse that one and that one down to one. And I think I'm going to leave that one alone for now. And then at the same thing at the bottom, I'm going to collapse a couple of these guys so that I'm only dealing with three edges. Okay, so I'm just kind of minimizing uh, that transition there a little bit. Okay, now I can exit the target weld tool. And I'm going to go ahead and unhide all because I want to see my body mesh back. And I'm ready to go ahead and connect this ear uh, to the head. All right. So again, I want to pick a transition. I want to pick one mesh to merge to the other. In this case, I'm going to move the head uh, vertices to the ear. And that's because the ear is the more complicated object. I'm just going to do like a slight rotation here. I might move it a little bit closer. Uh, but other than that, that's about as, as much as we're going to do here. And now what I want to do is I want to attach the ear to the head. So I'm going to select the ear here and I'm going to say attach. And I'm going to merge it to the body. And then see what happens. I did that on purpose. So see what happened to my bounding box and how that got all weird and, and catty corner. Um, that is an unfortunate problem with the attach tool. So you want to watch out. If I would have attached it the opposite way, so I'm going to undo this operation here. And I would have attached, I would have selected the body first, and then the smaller object, the ear. Watch what happens. So I'm going to do this again. My bounding box would not have gotten all messed up. So you want to watch that. I have a way to fix that, which uh, I'm happy to show you guys in lab. Uh, but if you do mess that up and you end up messing up your bounding box, uh, we can fix that. But if you just pay attention, though, and use the larger object that has a good bounding box, and then have it eat the smaller object that has a smaller bounding box, your bounding box will never get messed up. All right, So that's worth knowing. OK, so now we want to merge the ear onto the head. So I'm going to select the mesh here. I'm going to hit J to hide that bounding box. Go into vertex mode. Select one of these verts here that's kind of near the ear. And the first thing I'm going to do is pick a starting spot. In this case, I'm going to start here at the bottom of my ear. And I'm going to go into the target weld tool. And I'm just going to merge this vertex to this one. This vertex to this one this one to this one, and I'm just going to keep going. Same rule, you're just going to pull the vert to the closest vert. Okay, this one, this one. There we've got a little bit of a 
a weird transition, so I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to go back to the underside here and start doing the back of the ear. These can be collapsed down even further. So on the back side of the ear, we have a lot more leeway. We can kind of get away with uh, some sins, basically. We can hide some junky geometry back here and not have to worry about it a whole lot, especially if this character is going to get hair at a later date. And I'm just going to merge a couple of these down because I'm starting to Okay, and now we're starting to run out of options. So what I'm going to do is I can also see what's going on behind here. So for a second, I'm going to hit the F3 key to go into uh, wireframe. And sometimes that can kind of help you uh, determine what is going on and what connections need to be made. So it looks like this vertex right here, I could merge to this one right here. So I'm going to do that. And I left one out. It looks like right there. So I'm going to pull that over and just uh, connect that while I'm at it. And then I go back into the shaded view. And we end up with a lot more vertices up here in the corner here than uh, we actually have connecting spots for. So we can just kind of, again, make this little junky and not worry about it too much and merge all those into one and then finally this one into this one and I think that's it I think all of those are connected and uh, looks alright I'm gonna so I'm gonna exit exit the target well and I'm gonna go into wireframe here for a sec and I'm gonna turn off my wireframe and we have this really ugly uh, set of polygons there and the first thing we need to do is just make sure the smoothing groups are consistent before we do anything else. So I'm going to go into polygon mode here. I'm going to make sure I select all my polygons. And then I'm going to go into the polygon smoothing groups under the editable poly node. I'm going to use an auto smooth setting of 75. And I'm going to go ahead and click it. And then I'm going to go in and check that ear transition. And it's still a little ugly. And that's okay because we got a lot going on there. And we're still intending to subdivide this mesh one more time um, before we start sculpting it again. So when we subdivide it, we can demonstrate that if I go into the NERMS preview, we can see that that transition area is going to get a little bit prettier uh, when I do that. So I'm going to click on the NERMS, get out of the sub object so we can see. It. And then we do have a few kind of bad transition areas. So uh, we want to fix that by turning off the NERMS preview first. And I'm going to select this mesh. I want to go uh, show the wireframe. And I'm going to use the paint deformation tool here with the relax slash soften. Make my brush a little smaller. And I'm just going to go in here and hit these polygons in the transition area. And it's going to move all those edges a little closer together and take care of some of that junky um, artifact artifacts that, uh, that basically are undesirable. You want to be careful here, though. If you accidentally click with this tool in the wrong place, you can end up smoothing your ear out to nothing. So you want to make sure you don't do that. So I'm going to undo. I'm being very careful to just, just smooth the transition spots on between the head and the, uh, the ear and not smoothing the actual ear itself, which uh, I was very happy with the modeling on that, so I'm going to leave that alone. Okay. okay, and then at a certain point, you might have to actually go in. I'm going to get out of the paint uh, deformation tool, and you may actually have to just pull a couple verts yourself. So if you've got a situation like this where these vertices are looking a little weird, 
uh, you may have to just go ahead and kind of hand tweak those yourself and get them into a position that you're happy with like so Okay, so now that we've done that, we have uh, one more thing to do before we can uh, get into our final smoothing pass. And that is we actually have to mirror this mesh across, and then therefore we can attach it and um, weld it, and we're off to the races for our, our final smoothing pass on this model. So what I want to do here is I just want to point something out. We have this border edge, if I go to wireframe mode here and I go into border edge and I select that open face there, open border edge on the side of the guy. We can, we've can we been trying all along to keep this as planar as possible, but when we're modeling and we start pulling points and stuff, it's really hard to maintain that edge to be completely flat and to have all those vertices be planar. And so if I were to inspect this, I'm not actually going to do it, but I can assure you that there's subtle discrepancies in um, the vertices, they're not completely planar. There you can see it with the back, how they're diverging from each other. And then the head is reasonably good, so surprisingly I did a decent job of that. But it's very hard to do that. So um, what we're gonna do here is the easiest way to fix this is to select the border edge like I have. So you, again, you're in the editable poly, go to border, select the border, and then under the editable poly, there's a feature in here called Make Planar, all right? Now, you would think that logically, because I have a manipulator here and the x-axis is pointing this direction, that I would just have to say Make Planar in X, and, uh, and this time it works. Well, that's awesome. Uh, okay, so that completely blew my thing, because sometimes Max um, will give you an axis that's different from your actual manipulator in which to make planar. In this case, it lined up completely, so that's awesome that it did. But <clears throat> let's say you're not smart enough to look at the manipulator and say, is this X, Y, or Z? You could just click these one by one. So I could just try here, make planar Z. Nope, that's wrong. Control Z, undo. Try Y. Nope, that's wrong. Control Z, undo. Okay, let's try X. Ah, bingo. That's completely flat. Now that I've done that, I know that all these vertices along this shell are 100% flat to the plane. <clears throat> Therefore, when I mirror this mesh, um, the vertices have potential to line up completely, and I won't actually have to use the target weld tool to weld all these vertices all the way around, which can be very tedious and time consuming. All right. So the last thing I need to do in order to make sure that these vertices are going to weld and be overlapping 100% is I need to go into <clears throat> my object, and I'm going to hide the paint deform tools for a sec and I'm going to go into the hierarchy tab here and I want to change my objects pivot because if I go into an orthographic viewport and I look at this pivot point it's not lining up 100% with the vertices itself see how there's a little bit of a gap here between the manipulator and the, the um, vertices so what I want to do is I want to make sure there's no gap between my pivot point and my vertices on my object, which I now know are planar. So the way to do that is I'm going to go into the hierarchy tab here, a thing that looks like a little Lego octopus. And I'm going to go ahead and click on this button that says Effect Pivot Only. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to move that pivot around. Notice how the object's not moving. I'm not moving the object, I'm just moving its pivot point. So if I want this pivot point to be 100% planar to the vertices that I just made planar, then I'm going to go ahead and for a second turn on the snaps toggle, right click on it to expand the options and make sure that I have snap to vertex turned on. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap my pivot to one of the vertices that I just made planar. By doing that, I ensure now that my pivot point is planar to the vertices that I just made planar. So now, when I mirror this object, it's going to mirror it about the pivot point. Uh, all those vertices are going to overlap 
pretty much 100% right on top of each other. And I'm not going to have to use the target weld tool at all. All right. So I'm going to get out of pivot mode. I was in effect pivot only mode. I'm going to click that to get out of that mode. And then I'm going to zoom out here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the mirror button. And this time I want to mirror it. And I don't want to do an instance. I want to actually do a copy. And the reason for that is because I'm going to combine these meshes together and cre create kind of a master mesh, <clears throat> which has both sides of my character. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that and say OK. And then I want to pop over here into the perspective view. And it's a good idea before you merge your mesh to just check all your boundary vertices to make sure there's no problems, right? So I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to come all the way up the top here. And then what I'm looking for is just problem areas where maybe um, I have some verts that are kind of overlapping each other or I have like a, a essentially a vert overlapping another edge and therefore it creates kind of a double edge. I want to make sure that that's not happening. So I'm going to look all the way around my mesh here. We've got some overlap here, but that's on the outside, right? We know that the interior border edge actually lines up 100% on top of it, each other. So it's okay if we have overlap on the outside. We know that the interior is probably correct, right? So that looks pretty good to me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this mesh, and I'm going to get into the modifier stack, and I'm going to click on the top, Editable Poly, and I want to go to Attach, and now I'm going to attach the other side of the mesh. I'm going to exit attach mode by either clicking on the button or right-clicking in the interface. And I still have one thing left to do. I have to go into vertex mode, and I have to select all the vertices. This is best to do in an orthographic viewport rather than a perspective viewport. So I'm going to select all of these verts down the center line of my character. And I accidentally moved those and uh, almost made a copy of it. So I'm going to undo that. I want to add to the selection, so I'm going to hold down the control key. Whoops. And I don't know why it keeps trying to move it. I'm not asking to move. Oh, I now know why. Because I accidentally had my snaps toggle turned on. That's why it keeps trying to move it. So I'm going to turn off my snaps toggle. Hold down the control key. Whoops. Hit Q to get out of move. Hold down the control key to add to the selection. And I just want to select all the verts down the center line of my character. And then now I want to go into the weld settings. And I'm going to open up the settings dialog for this. And I can use a weld threshold with kind of a low value. I think in this case a 0 0.01 will work fine. And I'm going to say OK. Did you see what happened just there? When I did that, I saw the lips kind of collapse. So I want to undo this operation. Aha. That was unacceptable. So I'm going to undo this operation, or just not accept it. And what that meant was I used a weld threshold that was much too high. All right. So I wouldn't need to use a much, much uh, smaller setting. So I'm going to go into the weld threshold again. And instead of a 0.1, I need to do a 0.01. I'm going to hit enter. That looks like that actually worked. So what you're going to try to do in this case is you always want to find the closest vertices you have together in your mesh. And if they don't accidentally merge, then you're relatively um, <clears throat> certain that the vertices you wanted to merge merge, but the ones you didn't want to didn't merge. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. That's completely merged. And now we are ready at this stage in the game to probably first of all, I'm going to go into uh, shaded mode. And the first thing I want to do is I want to fix this transition here. So any transition I have between the two shells where it's suddenly uh, creating like a, I call these shells, or it's just like a pinch, pinch point. Anywhere we have one of those, I want to go in and I want to hit those with the, um, the relax soften tool here. And notice this vector here. That vector is basically the strength setting for this tool. And I want to change that a little bit. I don't want this to smooth so much anymore. So I'm going to hold down the Shift and Alt keys and then miss mouse drag. And the size of that vector is basically how intense that tool is going to be. So I'm going to turn the tool down a little bit. 
And now I just want to come in here and I want to kind of paint this transition out and get rid of that artifact as much as I can. And it might help at this point to turn on the wireframe unshaded because then you can see kind of the result of what your smoothing is doing to the mesh. And I have another shell up here at the top of the head. Again, see what happened was I, I uh, smoothed that out and it's basically way, way, way too intense on the tool. So again, I'm going to dial that tool down to strength and then I'm just going to use it less so that I, I don't want to fix one artifact with another artifact. So I'm going to turn the tool down and I'm going to hit the back of the head. And then that spot where I had the back that was kind of overlapping, I'm going to fix that right now and I want to increase my brush size. I'm going to do that by holding down the control and shift key simultaneously. And then I'm going to hold down the alt and shift keys to increase my strength a little bit. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to hit the back there and that's going to solve that little overlapping problem that I have. And I'm going to do the same thing there. You get a little bit more natural transition there into the back of the buttocks. And that's it. So again, I would go through, I'd probably do that over the entire mesh. I'm just kind of simplifying it for now. I'm going to hit these a little bit in here. Fix that. I did notice there was a slight transition issue down here. Crotch. I'm going to fix that. See how I'm getting a stuck pixel again? Same issue as before, I believe. Uh, I think that's a, those are all merged. I don't think that's the problem. So in order to fix that, I'm going to right-click on this and say convert to editable mesh. Right-click and convert it back to an editable poly immediately. And then I'm going to go into the Relax Soften tool. And it's still sticking, so let's find out why. Let's see if, in fact, I'm going to hit the Q key to get out of the Sculpt tool. It looks, oh, uh, there we go, not welded. So in this case, it was, I had vertices that were not welded. So I'm going to go into vertex mode, and I'm going to do a target weld here. And let's check this other one below. Same thing. So I'm going to target weld that. And let's see, hopefully this isn't going to be too many of these. No, it looks like it was just the two. So I'm going to confirm that. Again, going back into the paint deform. Relax, soften. Change my brush size here, make it a little smaller. There we go. Fixed. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do here is um, it's important to... If you're going to make a mesh that you're building in a symmetrical manner to desymmetrify it at some point, and this is the purpose of the final sculpting pass, is to first of all tighten up the mesh and add all the uh, minute details that you want, but also to get rid of some of the symmetrical nature of the mesh. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to kind of fix, you want to also fix transitions such as this at the chest line. and now that we have the mesh uh, combined, we can turn on the wireframe unshaded, and we could actually go ahead and subdivide this one more time. At least, you could probably even do two. At a certain point, though, you're going to run out of real estate with your computer and just with 3ds Max and its limitations in terms of how many polygons you can have and still have the sculpt surfaces full work. So uh, there's a fine line there, but we're going to find it. Uh, what I've discovered is it's the performance is pretty good if I smooth this mesh one more time. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the mesh here. And I'm going to add a turbo smooth to it. And there we get plenty of density on our mesh. If I were you, I probably would not go any higher than this. This is uh, any higher than this, and you're going to see a slowdown. However, if you're brave and you, you really want that extra mile of detail, Go ahead and you could go ahead and subdivide it one more time. And I think you're going to see like a massive performance hit though. Uh, but you could do it if you're brave and you, and you get it done. I'm all for that. So now that we've turbo smoothed this, the first thing you want to do is we're going to save a version of the scene so that we have one before the turbo smooth gets baked. So I'm going to save this again, hitting the plus key, another iteration. 
And then now, in order to use the use the turbo smooth or the uh, sculpt surfaces tool, we have to bake the geometry. If you leave the turbo smooth uh, as a piece of history, the tool is just not going to work correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bake this, and I'm going to do that by right clicking, and I'm going to say collapse all. So bake is just the slang term for collapsing all the history and, and baking it down to um, to a mesh. So I'm going to say collapse all. I'm going to say hold yes. And now I have my mesh baked. Now that it's baked, I can go into the section before where I had the abs kind of laid out, but I didn't really have enough detail to get the tight uh, muscles from transition to transition. Now I do. So I'm going to go into the Sculpt Surfaces tool. Again, the Sculpt Surfaces tool is not showing up because right now I have an editable mesh instead of an ed editable poly. And the Sculpt Surfaces tool does not work on editable mesh. So I have to right click on this and say editable poly. Once I've done that, now you can see here that the paint deformation shows up. And the process is identical to before, except for now we have some more extra edges to deal with. So I'm just going to go in here to the push-pull. I'm going to grab my brush. I'm going to change the size a little bit, make it a little smaller. I'm going to definitely change the intensity here. And I'm just going to go in here and too intense, right? That was way too intense. So I'm going to change the intensity again, take that strength down. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start modeling my ab muscle in here. And then I can model a tighter ab muscle on this side. And then in the areas where I want there to be a tighter pinch, right? I want there to be a tighter crease. All I need to do is go into the Paint Deform tool and grab the Smudge tool. And what the Smudge tool is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to smudge these edges. I'm going to increase the intensity on this a little bit. Smudge these edges kind of closer together in the areas where I want a tighter transition between meshes and in areas I can space it out in areas where I don't. See how that's working? So rather than me having to keep increasing the, the density of my mesh indefinitely, I can actually use the smudge tool to, uh, to basically get more detail into the mesh without actually having, having to add more detail to it. And so if we see this, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the, I'm going to hit the F4 key to turn off the wireframe. We can see here that we can get a nice pack here on that ab muscle in relation to the other ab muscle. And then you're just going to do this on a larger scale. So that's why it's also important to work low, loose and low. So the first pass was to get all your muscle groups kind of blocked out and in the right place. And then this next pass is going to be going into the actual muscles themselves and tightening them, tightening them up and getting that nice tight transition on everything to give that sense of reality that you're looking for. Uh, this tool is pretty awesome. Right now I'm in smudge. Uh, if I go to push-pull, uh, basically the way it works is the shift key is smooth. And it'll smooth the mesh. If I turn on wireframe, you can see here. Um, the alt key will go to push mode. And if you just let it go, it'll do the default of pull, as you guys know. And that's it. You're going to go through the mesh and tighten everything up and, um, you know, knock yourself out. And that's, at this point, it just kind of becomes fun. Uh, you're no longer modeling. Everything's kind of laid out. Now you're just getting it to look good. It's kind of like the, 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 the final tweaking and uh, the final reward when you can uh, render this puppy out and actually be proud of your work. So that's it uh, for this lecture. I'm going to go ahead and close it down.